This legislation, I believe, is the most radical legislation the Senate has considered in the nine years I've been here, and it is the most dangerous legislation pending before the United States Congress. You know, I listened to the speeches this morning. I listened to Senator Schumer's speech, where he recounted this country's shameful history of Jim Crow laws. And he's right. Jim Crow laws were bigoted, racist, and disenfranchised millions of people. And it is worth remembering that those Jim Crow laws were drafted by Democrats, they were implemented by Democrats, and they kept Democrats in power. Now, today's talking point repeated in the media is that was the Democrats of yesterday, not today. Well, today the Democrats are doing it again. This legislation, to use a phrase that has been popularized on the media recently, is Jim Crow 2.0. This legislation would disenfranchise millions of Americans. Many of us are referring to this legislation as the Corrupt Politicians Act because it would do. Senator Schumer talked about politicians picking their constituents. That's what this legislation does. This legislation is designed to ensure that Democrats never lose another election. This legislation would register millions of illegal aliens to vote. It is intended to do that. It is intended to do that because Democrats have made the decision that millions of illegal aliens voting are likely to vote for Democrats. This would register vast numbers of criminals and felons to vote because Democrats have made the decisions that criminals and felons are likely to vote for Democrats. This legislation strikes down virtually every voter integrity law adopted at the state level. Voter ID laws. Over 70% of Americans support voter ID laws. By the way, over 60% of African Americans in this country support voter ID laws. 29 states have voter ID laws on the books. What does this legislation do? Strikes them all down. It says it's illegal for any state to have a voter ID law. There is just a special level of shamelessness you need to have to claim that HR1 or S1, the For the People Act, is Jim Crow 2.0. To claim that voting rights legislation specifically, specifically intended to protect the rights of voters and expand access to voting and secure our electoral process somehow does the complete opposite is an almost impressive kind of gaslighting. But don't you worry, because if anyone can manage to reach that level of shamelessness, it's Ted Cruz. Now what Republicans like Ted Cruz are banking on here is that people don't know exactly what's in the For the People Act, and so their goal now is to fill that vacuum with disinformation. They want to basically win the messaging war and redefine the bill to prevent it from passing. Kind of like how Republicans seized on the messaging vacuum surrounding the Affordable Care Act's passing. And remember how all we heard was how there would be death panels deciding whether you lived or died? That's what Republicans will do if given the opportunity to define legislation that is popular and helpful, which is exactly what the ACA was in 2009 and what the For the People Act is now. They don't have any governing abilities beyond demonizing good legislation. So with that said, because our job is to push back against people like Ted Cruz who will lie right to your face about what's in this bill, here's what the For the People Act does. It would end gerrymandering, arguably the most important provision wherein not all but mostly Republican-led states have drawn their own district lines to decide the outcomes of elections before they even happen, allowing politicians to choose the voters as opposed to the other way around. It would prohibit purging voters from the rolls, an issue we're seeing across the country, including today in Arizona. It would require candidates for president and vice president to disclose 10 years of tax returns. It would modernize voter registration by expanding automatic voter registration nationwide, an expansion from the 18 states that currently allow it. Instead of an opt-in system, it switches to an opt-out system. It would enhance voting access by requiring all states to offer at least 15 days of early, in-person voting and vote by mail. It would also restore voting rights to former felons and call for stronger voting rights for Native Americans and residents of Washington, D.C. It would secure our voting systems by ensuring every state follows the most secure practices and uses the most up-to-date voting equipment. It requires states to use voter-verified paper ballots. If there's an issue with a ballot, states would have to notify voters of the mistake and give them plenty of time to cure their ballots. It would take 
steps to stop dark money donations by requiring campaigns to disclose donors who contribute more than $10,000 because you should know who's trying to influence your vote and why. It would reward candidates who reject big dollar contributions by matching donations from everyday Americans six to one, meaning that a $10 donation would turn into a $60 donation, all funded by settlements paid by tax cheats. It would increase oversight of existing laws by bolstering the FEC. It would crack down on lobbying and reduce lobbyist influence on politicians. So if you can point me to the part where this is Jim Crow 2.0, where this somehow restricts voting or makes it more difficult to cast a ballot, please, by all means, feel free to point that out to me. Now, of course, Cruz falls back on the tenuous Republican talking point that Jim Crow laws were originally passed by Democrats. And he's technically right that Jim Crow laws were embraced by Democrats, but what he's misleading about is who those Democrats were. During the late 1800s, Southerners who opposed big government were Democrats, Northerners who sought expansions to federal power and passed laws granting protections for black Americans and advanced social justice were Republicans. The parties ultimately flipped by the time FDR was elected as a Democrat and passed the New Deal, which formed the basis of the parties as we know them today. But the point is that it was always the same conservatives, generally centered in the South, who've opposed voting rights and the same liberals, generally centered in the North, who fought for them. It doesn't matter whether they're called Democrats or Republicans or Libertarians or Martians, a a label is just a label, but Ted Cruz is just taking a desperate stab at trying to absolve his party, which, so that we're clear, is composed of the same conservatives who supported Jim Crow, regardless of what party affiliation they answer to. Cruz goes on to tell some outright bald-faced lies, like saying that this bill will give undocumented immigrants the right to vote. That is unequivocally untrue. Nothing in this bill does that. PolitiFact also fact-checked this claim and also found it outright false. The For the People Act would keep in place federal and state criminal laws that prohibit non-citizens from registering to vote or voting. And in fact, Non-citizens who do try to vote could face jail time, deportation, or fines. But then again, are you really surprised that Cruz fearmongers about what else than immigrants? Because what would a Republican be if not trying to scare you using brown people? Cruz lies again by claiming that the For the People Act strikes down voter ID laws. Again, a bald-faced lie. The bill doesn't strike down or ban voter ID laws. All it does is offer a workaround for those who don't have ID, which by the way, is a good thing because forcing people to purchase ID to be able to vote is called a poll tax. The For the People Act simply offers people the option, if you don't have ID, to present a sworn written statement to an election official under penalty of perjury that states the voter is eligible to vote. If someone's willing to go to prison if they're found to be lying, I'm pretty sure we can trust that they can cast their ballot while their identities are verified. Cruz says that the bill would register criminals and felons, making it sound like Democrats are lining up in front of the prison cells of rapists and murderers. In reality, hysterics aside, the For the People Act restores voting rights to former felons, meaning those who've done their time and are reintegrated into society. The whole point of doing your time is that once you're done doing it, you're done. If you're not in prison forever, you shouldn't be treated like you're in prison forever. And if Ted Cruz thinks that you should never get to live down your worst moments, then I'm sure he wouldn't be opposed to relitigating his impromptu trip to Cancun while his own constituents were freezing to death every single day, right? Finally, I think the most telling point here is when Cruz says that this legislation is designed to ensure that Democrats never lose another election. If allowing people to vote is enough to ensure permanent Democratic rule, then maybe the problem here isn't the Democrats. Maybe Republicans might wanna do some self-reflection. Again, all this legislation would do is reduce obstacles for people to legally vote. It would make congressional districts fair. It would stop crooked politicians from purging voters from rolls. This bill doesn't force you to vote for Democrats. It simply makes it so that you can vote if you're eligible. And if having the option to vote means that Republicans will be irreparably harmed, then that seems like a pretty fundamentally problematic issue for the GOP. The fact is that because the GOP's agenda is so woefully unpopular, they have no choice but to limit the right to vote because that is their only viable way to entrench their own minority rule. And you'll notice too, the bills being passed around the country right now don't have anything to do with legislative priorities. There's nothing about taxation or limiting the role of government or whatever else the GOP hides behind. It's over 350 bills restricting voting rights. That is all the Republican Party stands for, rigging the game to stay in power, not legislating, not not governing and dear God not helping their constituents, it is only retaining their grip on power by whatever means necessary.
To see more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe. And for a deeper dive, check out my podcast, No Lie with Brian Tyler Cohen, where I discuss the week's top stories and interview major players in the world of politics, like Vice President Kamala Harris, White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki, Elizabeth Warren, Chuck Schumer, Katie Porter, Pete Buttigieg, Nancy Pelosi, and many more. Again, that's No Lie with Brian Tyler Cohen, available anywhere you listen to podcasts.